Hi, I'm Adam. This is Kevin. And we are Tech Guys Who Invest. This is the place for business people and investors to learn all about investing. We offer a fresh perspective on what it's like to have a day job while investing. And we share lessons learned on our investing journey. Our vision is to educate and entertain you while adding tons of value to your daily commute. Welcome to our show. Today on Tech Guys Who Invest, we're lucky enough to have Rod Cleef on the show. For those of you who don't know who Rod is, he's a real estate investor, an entrepreneur, owns multiple businesses. Rod's an author, a mentor, a big community philanthropist, and has one of the top rated real estate podcast shows out there. We're so excited to have Rod on the show today, and we can't wait for him to add tons of value to your daily commute. Rob, we're so excited to have you here today. Thanks so much for joining us on Tech Guys Who Invest. Well, let's have fun, guys. Let's have fun. Kevin, Adam, I, I uh, uh, really enjoy these things, and, and let's see if I can add some value to your listeners. Yeah, there, there's no question you will. So, Rod, Kevin and I are really big mindset guys, and one of the things I love about you is you are a big mindset guy, and I really take a lot uh, from you. I listen to your show and attend your events, and uh, I'd love you to just kind of share with our listeners some of why mindset's so important and some of your thoughts around that. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I learned about it really fairly young. I immigrated to this country when I was six years old with my brother Albert and my mother's Vancha, and we, we, I immigrated from Holland. I'm Dutch, and we ended up in Denver, Colorado. Didn't have much. Uh, in fact, I wore clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school and, you know, until I got a job and could buy some decent clothes. And, um, you know, we ate expired food, drank powdered milk. I mean, I remember we had to go to the day old bread store, you know, and I know other people listening may have had it harder than we did, but I knew I wanted more. And my mom had an incredible work ethic. She babysat kids um, so we'd have enough money to eat. And what was cool is with her babysitting money, when I was 14, she bought a house, the house across the street for 14, I'm sorry, for $30,000 approximately. And then, but when I was 17, she told me it had gone up $20,000 in her sleep. And I'm like, what? I'm getting into real estate. I'm going to be a <laughs> real estate tycoon. So I went out and got my real estate license. Okay. My broker's license. And I didn't make hardly any money when I was you know, 18, I made, made, made eight or 10 grand. My second year, maybe 10 or 12 grand. But my third year, I made over 100 grand. So what happened between year two and year three? And I'm answering your question, by the way, right now. What happened was I discovered mindset, okay? And that truly, that 80 to 90% of your success in anything, any business, including real estate, including entrepreneurship, stock investing, anything that you do, tech, requires mindset requires a positive attitude and requires you know positive mindset and it's all about your psychology that's really 80 to 90 percent of your success in anything so fast forward to today you know i've owned over 2,000 uh, properties um a lot of houses and some apartment complexes and uh, we just bought a thousand doors in the last 120 days actually when we close on this one in sarasota it'll been a thousand in the last 120 days and you know, in 2006, my net worth, worth, net worth, net worth went up $17 million while I slept, you know, a little more than my mom's 20,000, but there's a punchline. Okay. And, but, but let me, let me, let me preframe the punchline. So, you know, when, when that happens, that kind of a windfall, people could tend to get a big head. Well, I got a big head. Okay. I thought I was a freaking real estate God. I mean, you could barely fit my head through the door. I did the math on it. It's like $8,300 an hour for the whole year. Wow. I mean, you know, and, 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 you know, when, when you get a big head and you think you're better than you should, God or the universe or whatever you believe will give you a freaking smackdown. Well, That's that right. was 2008. I got my butt kicked. Okay. I, I, uh, I had what I affectionately call a seminar. It was a $50 million seminar. I lost $50 million. So I lost the 17 and a whole lot more. And, and it was really hard because I thought I was set for life. I really did. I had 800 houses. I had, uh, you know, multiple apartment complexes and, and I got my butt handed to me. And so what I enjoy talking about is the mindset that got me there in the first place 
And then the mindset that got me back to the success that I enjoy today and got me out of from underneath that rock. And um, if you'd like, if you know, if you'll humor me, uh, I'll share something you've already heard, Adam, which is, you know, my goal setting workshop uh, at, at my live events. That's the first thing I do at my workshops, but I'll do a real high level overview real quick. So your listeners can, can, can do it at home. I mean, but guys, if you're listening, I recommend you take some notes because uh, you'll, you'll definitely going to want to capture this. So um, I mean, is it okay? You want me to do that? Yeah, please. Absolutely. All right. All right. So, um, pick an hour when you've got a ton of energy. Okay. Don't do it right after a meal. You know, make sure you've got a lot of energy, make sure that, uh, you're well hydrated and, um, and sit down and write down everything you could ever possibly want in life. Okay. And, and I mean, take the lid off your brain. Imagine if you write it down, you're going to get it, which is not outside the realm of reality. So write down all the stuff, the, the houses, where do you want houses, different countries you want houses, the, the cars, the jet skis, the boats, the planes, whatever it is. In fact, I'm buying jet skis tomorrow. So um, whatever it is and, and write it down and don't limit yourself. You know, when I was 18, I, I knew I wanted to live on the beach. I, I, there's no beach in Denver, but I knew I wanted to live on the beach. And, and so I had pictures of palm trees and the beach and, and I ended up building this incredible 10,000 square foot, $8 million mansion on the beach where I owned the beach on one side and we had the bay on the backside. But it was unthinkable when I was 18, but I knew I wanted it. So do the same thing, guys. Don't, don't limit yourself. Write down, I don't care if it's a private island, a jet, whatever it is, write it down, yacht. And, and don't let the pen leave the paper. I know you have a lot of analytical people that listen to this show. Guys, keep writing. You can scratch it out later okay don't sit and try to analyze analyze whatever you're writing down here okay <laughs> keep writing and 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 um and also you know write down how much money you want to make a month from your real estate investments how you know in three years for example how much you want to make in 10 years write down how much money you want in the bank in three years and in 10 years um you know write down uh uh write down the things you want to do like I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane a couple of weeks ago. Scared the <laughs> of me and I'll never do it again, but it's done. And, and so what do you want to do? Maybe, maybe write a book. Uh, maybe I wrote a book. This gave, gave away 20,000 copies actually. And, and uh, my team was like, Hey, you knucklehead, you're going to make some money on this thing someday. And, and finally it just went on Amazon. So the physical copy will be available in a couple of weeks. But the, uh, as you know, Adam, the, uh, uh, Kindle copy has been around hit bestseller. We, 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 we messed around with that and hit bestseller list, which was cool, but I digress. What, what do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to learn a foreign language? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to climb a mountain? You know, whatever it is, write it down. So it's not just the stuff. Also write down everything you want to learn in life. Okay. You know, um, I live in a compound now it's six buildings, beautiful. And, uh, and one of the buildings I've got my drum set that my wife bought me and I've never, used it one time. I'm going, but I'm going to learn how to play the drums. That's why she got it for me. Cause she knows I love rhythm. Um, I'm going to learn how to fly a helicopter. Uh, so, so, you know, what do you want to learn how to do? Write it down, learn a foreign language, whatever it is. Then lastly, so it's not just the stuff. Okay. It's, it's, this is bigger than that. Also write down who you want to help. You know, maybe you want to help your family, do something for your family, maybe, you know, uh, children or, 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 you know, family, but, but, also, maybe you want to do something bigger in the community. Maybe you want to uh, uh, help, uh, you know, the elderly or children or 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 uh, animals or the environment or whatever it is. Write it down, okay? So it's everything you want to do, be, or have. Now, when you can't think of another thing, I want you to now put a time limit on each goal, and that makes it real. So put how many years it's going to take you to achieve it. Put a one, a three, a five, a ten, even a twenty. But remember this, as human beings, we will overestimate what we can do in a year or a short period of time and massively underestimate what we can do in 10 or 20 years, like that house on the beach I was talking about. Um, so put a time limit on each goal. Then, and don't overthink it. Again, I got to remind, because I know you got a lot of analytical listeners. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just guess, okay? Write it down. Now, once you've got that done, I want you to pick your number one goal. I mean that holy, sh you know what goal, okay, that goal, okay? And, and write that down and put it on a separate sheet of paper. Now, if there's more than one that's equally exciting, just pick one, because it's not gonna matter for what we're gonna do next. Then I want you to pick your top 
three one-year goals. Put those on a separate sheet of paper. So now you've got four goals on a separate sheet of paper. Um, and this is where most people stop. In fact, most people have never even gotten this far. I mean, you're, you're already headed 99% of the world when you've done this, okay? And this is yeah. designing your lives, guys. I mean, most people spend more time planning a, a birthday party or Christmas party than they do designing their lives. So, so um, do this. It's so powerful. Because, guys, how are you going to get everything if you don't know what it is with clarity? Mm -hmm. Clarity is power. You got to know what the heck it is you want. Okay. So anyway, once you've got those four goals on a separate sheet of paper, now we're going to do a couple more steps and they're really important. The goals are important, but they're not nearly as important as why those goals are an absolute must. Okay. So you're going to write down why those goals are an absolute must. And you're going to use emotionally charged words because emotion is, words are very powerful. So you want to use words that that move you emotionally, like incredible and amazing and beautiful. And, and so, you know, you might write, uh, so I can show my kids what an amazing life looks like. Show my, so I can show my spouse what success looks like so that we can go travel wherever we want, whenever we want and bring whoever we want, um, you know, so we can have freedom. So, so write down why it's a must because the why is what's going to drive you. So many of us, have limiting beliefs from childhood, or we have fears that are, that are frankly, you know, they're, they're limiting belief systems. And there's a reason belief systems, the acronym is BS, because 99% of them have no basis in fact, but because we had some emotional event and it happened in our life that, you know, that, that impacted us, we think they're factual, but they're not. But this is the fuel that gets you through that stuff. Okay. Many of us are comfortable. You know, we've got a comfortable life when, when in fact, you know, the comfort zone's a warm place but nothing grows there. Okay. And, and, you know, I'm sure you've got a lot of people in the tech industry that listen to you that have comfortable jobs, but I got to tell you, there is no job security. My friends, I tell the story in my live event. You heard me show a picture of my dad up on stage, Adam. My dad worked for continental airlines for 36 years. Right. And, I mean, he used to have us boys. Um, with a, you could tell a continental plane cause it had a gold tail. They, they used to have a song around that, but, but they used, they used to, uh, and, and, and he would, if we saw one of those planes go by, he would make us stop and put our hands over our hearts and look up <laughs> at that plane. I mean, it was funny, but, but it, yeah, that's how much he loved the company. And he got laid off, okay? There is no job security, guys. So, so that's, why you, that's why this side hustle in real estate is so freaking important. And, and let me say this to you. If you don't love it or you don't think you can love it, go do something else or learn to love it because life is too freaking short to do something you don't love. But anyway, so you've got these four goals on a separate sheet of paper. You've written why they're an absolute must for you to achieve, not a should. Now, I also want you to put some pain in there if you don't achieve the goal, okay? Because as human beings, we will do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. So use that so that I don't feel like a failure. So I don't fail my children. So I don't live a life of regret. And I know that sounds harsh, and it is. But this is the fuel, guys. This is the fuel to get you to take freaking action and, and take action on the life you deserve and, and build something that truly is secure, not a W-2 job, okay, which isn't, okay? And so the, put the pain in there as well. I'll tell you, there was a, a nurse in Australia, uh, a woman named Bronnie Ware, that wrote a, that she, she was a hospice nurse and she counseled hospice patients. And she asked them five questions. Uh, and she asked them what their five biggest regrets were in life. You want to know what the number one regret was? Yeah. Not living up to what I was capable of and following someone else's plan for me. Okay. Wow. No regrets, my friends. And this is the fuel that gets you to get out of your comfort and take freaking action. So once you've got the positive and neg negative reasons why, there's one more piece. And it's visualizing. So if, you, if you'll let me take another minute or two, Adam, I'll share what I'm talking about with visualization. Please okay? do, please. Okay. Awesome. All right. so, so I didn't know what this was until the movie or the book, The Secret, came out. You know, I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, and, and it's about the law of attraction. And, and I discovered it. And then I was like, holy shit, that's what I've been doing. So, so um, when I turned 18, I'm going to give you, well, actually, I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you some public examples before I give you my personal examples. So, um, what you want to do is you want pictures of what you want around you. Okay. If you saw the pictures on the walls that I have here, you'd see the things that matter to me now. But, but a great public example is um, 
uh, Jim Carrey, the actor Jim Carrey. When he was flat freaking broke, he wrote himself a check for $10 million and he put it in his wallet and he put on there for services rendered. And that's how, and he used to go up to the Hollywood sign and look at it when he was broke. And that's how much he made for Dumb and Dumber. Okay. Another example, um, Roy, uh, Walt Disney. When Epcot Center was built in Disney World here in Florida, um, Roy, uh, I'm sorry, Walt had already died. And his brother Roy was at the grand opening of Epcot Center. And this story made the news. So this, this, this particular blurb made the news in that a reporter came up to Roy and said, you know, it's a shame Walt didn't get to see this. And Roy looked at him and said, the only reason you're seeing this is because Walt saw this. Olympic athletes visualize a race before they run it. it it's, it's like standard practice now. You must do it, okay? So um, because it's been proven to enhance their results. Now, I'll give you my personal examples of, of visualization. So again, I didn't really know what I was doing. But when I was 18, I bought a Ford four-door Granada because I wanted a big four-door car because I was going to make money selling real estate, showing houses, okay? I figured that's what you had to have. And this was the ugliest freaking thing you've ever seen. And <laughs> <laughs> but it was bench seats, you know, just bone ugly. And and so I worked with a guy who really inspired me. He's the guy that I was telling you about that taught me about mindset. And and then I spent 20 years following Tony Robbins around the planet. And of course, he's the king of that. But um, uh, but he had two Corvettes and he let me drive one. Nice. And that's a critical piece, that experiential piece. If there's something you want, go experience it as closely as you can. If it's a car, go drive it. You know, go go test drive it. If it's a house you want, go to an open house of a house like it. But you want to experience it. That experiential piece is important. Now, he let me drive it. And so I'm like, man, this is freaking awesome. I feel so cool and not in this bone ugly car that I have. And so I got a picture out of a magazine because there was no internet hadn't even been thought of yet of a Corvette. I got a picture of a Corvette out of a magazine and I taped it underside of my visor in that in that. Granada. So you could see every time I got in, I could see it. And within a year or two, I had a beautiful red Corvette. I'm going to give you a couple more examples. Please know that this is not me bragging because this stuff doesn't even interest me anymore. Um, so back then was the TV show Magnum PI. It was a, it was a, about a detective and the, and the actor was Tom Selleck and he drove this freaking awesome red Ferrari 308. Okay. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I'm <laughs> going to get a Ferrari and actually got a picture of that Ferrari, put it on the visor of my Corvette. And within a year or two, I had a Maserati look just like it. Last example. And if I'd have been thinking, I would have gone over to one of the other buildings in my compound here and got to show this to you, but, but I can show you something else in a second. Um, so I'm the guy that always wanted a Lamborghini. Okay. I had the posters in my room with the Lamborghini Countach with the bikini girls and the car washes. And, yeah. I had those posters, man. And, and, and my son uh, was nine years old at the time and he collected models of exotic cars. And I, and I have it over in the other building and I wish I'd, I had it, I could show it to you. But he had a model of the exact same color and style black Gallardo that I ended up with that of course I wrecked, but, but <laughs> this stuff works guys. Okay. In fact, let me show you something. So, so since we're doing this on video, this is my planner. Okay. I use this every day in the back of this thing are pictures that have been in here for 20 years. Okay. The first pictures are my gratitude pictures, okay? Because everything starts from a place of gratitude. So these are my kids when they were young. Then the houses that I wanted. This looks just like the view on the house on the beach that I built that I was telling you about. I had that kind of glass, 80, 10 feet high, 80 feet long, bug glass. This looks like the compound that I have now, okay? Wow, cool. I live in a compound now. It's six buildings here. Then we've got a giant main house. We've got a two bedroom guest house. I've got family in it right now. We've got a, an, a, a media center that's got a theater room when I can see on my security camera, they're on there watching a movie right now. And next to it's an exercise room. I, in fact, we're having mirrors put in it today, conference center. And I mean, a spectacular home. It's like a park. It's two, two acres. And because God's got a sense of humor, I can see my old house that I lost and all the other riffraff, um, <laughs> Um, across the bay. I literally can see it out my backyard. It's just hilarious. But anyway, because I had freaking pictures, guys, okay, and and like other stuff that I have, like watches. I've got, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches that I thought were important at one time, you know, and, and stupid shit. And, and the Lamborghini <laughs> before I ever oh, yeah. got it, okay, the Rolls Royce. All this stuff that I got because I had pictures. So 
listen, I know some of you analytical ones are like, oh, this is a little too floofy for me. Well, your mistake, respectfully, okay? So, so get the freaking pictures, put them around you, and this stuff will manifest. You can see behind me. You can kind of see my vision boards next to my chair there. Can you see them in the corner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's what that was. I, I, use them every, I use them every day, man. And I've got a gratitude board, and I've got – you got them there too? You gonna to show me? Yeah, I'm gonna show you here. I have to turn this little virtual background off real yeah, yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't show up. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Right there. I freaking love it, man. So this stuff works. You know, I I had John Asraf, um, the guy in the secret that shows the vision boards. Uh, right. I've had him on the show and, and and done business with him. Good guy. But anyway, so guys, that's how I pulled myself out of the dumps. That's how I got the ability to lose 50 million in the first place. And, um, and that's, that's what you do. You got to know exactly what it is you want, but this is how I, you know, got out from underneath that rock and built, you know, what I have now. And, um, thank God. And, and, uh, because I knew exactly what I wanted with clarity, clarity is power. And then I knew why I had to have it. So anyway, hopefully that added a little value. Yeah, that added a ton of value. Actually, I, I don't even really know what to follow up there. <laughs> well, you know, listen, we can talk real estate till we're blue in the face. I don't think we're going to have enough time today. But, but you know, the bottom line is this is more important. It really is. You know, when I talk about loving what it is you do and then and then pushing through fear and limiting beliefs and comfort to get what it is you want, that's the first step in all of this, okay? So, you know, I, I do three day live events, like you said, Adam. You've been to, uh, I know at least one. I don't know, maybe more than one. Yeah. But, but, and and, you know, it's just me for three days, drinking through a fire hose about multifamily. But I spend a lot of time on this mindset stuff, don't I? Oh man, I love it, Rod. And your yeah. events are uh, unbelievable. I mean, I Thank can't you. believe how much value you give. Thank you. Uh, listen, just, let me. I'm really glad you said that. The most successful people on the planet are the ones that give the most value. So when you get into this business, like you guys are doing, the fact that you're adding value to people right here, you guys are going to be huge successes because you're adding more freaking value. And so, yeah, my events, I do a lot of mindset stuff, but it's drinking through a fire hose for sure. And you know what I'll do for you guys? If, if one of you, I've got an event coming up in Baltimore. I don't know when you're going to air this, but it's in September. Um, and it's rodinbaltimore.com. And if somebody puts in the word tech, I'll give them a hundred bucks off. Okay. So, so you guys, you guys will get a hundred bucks off for any of your listeners if they want to come. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Rod. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. I just awesome, got to, like, let me make myself a note to tell my team. So I don't forget, but, uh, hang on one second tech code. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, let me say one other thing, um, before I forget about goals, cause it relates to goals. So, you know, I built that amazing house on the beach, okay, that, and, and, and I call it that testament to my ego because that's really what it was. It was me proving to the world I was good enough. I needed to show the world I was good enough. And I, uh, about, and I worked for this thing for, you know, decades, okay, and I'm floating in the pool about, and this relates to goals. That's why I want to mention it before I forget. Um, I'm floating in the pool about two months after I built it, and I'm looking up at this giant home. And it's, it, this thing is incredible. I mean, a spiral staircase up through the middle, giant staircase on the second floor. There was a, aquariums that, that went halfway around the staircase. They were 20 feet long, 10 feet high. I mean, the aquariums alone were like 200 grand, okay, to give you an idea of this house, okay? Wow. And, and waterfall, giant waterfall, the second floor into the pool. The pool's changing colors, has fiber optic lighting, just magnificent home, okay? I could go on and on. I could lay in bed, look left and see the beach, look right and see the bay. It was a Gulf to Bay property. Anyway, two months after I built it, I'm floating in the pool at night, changing colors. My family's inside sleeping, look, and looking up at this thing, and I should be incredibly proud, and I got incredibly depressed. And I'm like, what the hell? I just achieved success by unbelievable 100x society standards, and I'm depressed? What is going on? Well, when I look back on it, I realized there were two things happening, and I want to share them both with you. One is you should never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up behind it because you need a vision for the future. In fact, one of my coaching students just retired from his core job because he's kicked ass with, with multifamily investing. And we had this conversation because he's in that place right now too. You've got to have other goals lined up because like the book, good book says, without a vision, the people perish. You have to have a vision for the future. And I didn't have a vision for the future. So that's one thing that was going on. 
But the second even bigger thing that I want to share with your listeners, because I know you guys all want financial success, whatever your definition of that is. But I had was totally focused on Rod. It was all me, 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 me. Show the world I'm good enough. It's all about Rod and Rod, Rod, Rod. And um, I had achieved success, but I was unfulfilled. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. And so I went, I, I bought some books actually. And, and one of them was Tony's book. And if you ever have an opportunity to see him, just go freaking do it while he's still speaking. Trust me, you'll thank me. He just had an event this last weekend. Uh, I think in Dallas killed it like he usually does. But anyway, I went and saw him 20 years ago. Okay. And one of the, I mean, changed my life on all kinds of levels. But the big thing I want to share with you today was um, he fed families for the holidays. He does what he calls a basket brigade. And he's done tens of millions now. I mean, it's, it's just, he's got a heart as big as Rhode Island. Um, and I'm like, that's really cool. And I'd always focused on me. I'm like, you know what? Giving back sounds cool. Um, sorry, guys, my alarm went off. I don't know why. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I, giving back, um, that's really cool. So I went home and I fed five families that year for Thanksgiving. My brother and I did. We got boxes of food. We went to a church, said, who really needs help? And we got five families. We delivered to those five families. Third family changed my life. So we go up to the house and we had frozen turkey for the dinner and we had the pan to roast it in. If they didn't have a pan, we had toys for the kids. We found out they had kids and we get up to the door of this third house and it's a crap. I mean, just I try not to use profanity, but it's, a, <laughs> it's a nasty house. Okay. And one bedroom with five kids. Okay. She comes out, the mom comes out, single mom, dad's gone. Single mom comes out. She sees the food. She starts crying. Kids come out. Several of them start crying. I start crying. I'm hooked. Um, and I'm blessed to say now, in the last 20 years, I've fed 65,000 children for the holidays here in Sarasota and Bradenton, Florida. Wow. We've done 10,000, actually close to 20,000 backpacks. We're doing a backpack brigade here in just a, a month or so for school. We're given 1,500 backpacks filled with school supplies to area kids. We've done that for years. Done, you know, probably close to 20,000 teddy bears that we give to the local police departments for their officers to keep in a vehicle if they encounter a child that's been traumatized. And that has given my life a richness you cannot imagine. So my last point to make to your listeners is success without that is not success, okay? Um, you have to give back in some fashion. You don't have to do anything as big as I did, but do something to give back if you're not already. Because I'll tell you, I've interviewed guys on my show, billionaire, uh, millionaires that I can tell are exactly like I was back then, totally focused on themselves, don't care about anybody else. And I feel sorry for them. You know, yeah. I recognize it because it was me. Okay. And, and I feel sorry for them because they're totally focused on themselves instead of giving back. So if you're listening, success is not success without that component. Make sure you incorporate that component. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's all I got. That's Drop awesome, the mic, man. man. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> yeah. it, it, listen, it's all, it's all real. And, and you know, if, if, if you're, if you're, if your peeps are interested, um, I've got an incredible Facebook group. I think you're, you're in it. There's like 28,000 yep. multifamily investors in it. You just go to multifamilycommunity.com. It's a direct link to that group. Um, you know, you are the five people you hang around with. So make sure that you're around people that want more, that'll hold you to a higher standard. I actually I'm a big believer in masterminds. I've got my mastermind here in Denver next week. Really excited about this. About five billion in assets represented in that group. You know, wow. because because you know, rising tide lifts all ships. You want to be around people that are making stuff happen. If you can come see me at one of my events, I promise you, you'll be glad you did. If you if you go to that multifamily community and put in the word boot camp and see what other people have said, um, unsolicited, there's hundreds of glowing testimonials uh, just yeah because i could testify I, you can testify all right <laughs> yeah so 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 and then you know i also have incredible free resources on my website i used to give away the book for free and my team was like you know hey dummy make some money on this thing at some point so <laughs> it's on there but 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 uh i i have i have another workbook on there for free at rodcleef.com which is incredible it's a due diligence checklist it's like 60 pages it's everything you could ever think of thinking about if you're considering buying a property. So no stone gets left unturned and it's free. And there's other books that are free and articles and videos and all sorts of stuff that'll help you learn this business. So I, I hope you'll take advantage of that if you're listening and interested in this business.
Yeah, that's amazing. And, and Rob, what was the URL again, just to make it's sure we Rod, got that? It's rodkleef.com, R-O-D-K-H-L-E-I-F as in frank.com. I've got my podcast episodes that are on video just like yours are. You know, my podcast hit 6 million downloads last week. I'm freaking blessed. It's just, it just blows me away. Um, and, um, and, and so, you know, lots of free content there for your people to utilize and, and learn from. So, awesome. Well, yeah. Rod, you added a ton of value to this episode and Thank you. can't let you go without asking you a tech question. So, <laughs> which piece right. of tech, not to be, I guess, pessimistic here, but which piece of tech is, is giving you the biggest headache in your life today? I will tell you the one right now that comes to mind is Asana, which is project management software. Now we love it and it's going to open up our world, but to get me to use it and, and rely <laughs> on it and, and go through it and own it and, and, and become an expert at it. That's, it's been painful, but, but I do believe in it. So we use Slack and Asana and they work extremely well together, but um, Asana is, is, it's great. I'm not, I'm not, if you work for Asana, I love the, the potential of it, but for me who can't spell technology, um, you know, it's, it's been painful. So. Yeah, and that's cool. You mentioned Slack because techies. Oh, love we love that. Slack, man. We freaking yeah. love it. It's like OPA. It's like eliminated hundreds of emails. Yep. And I get about five hundred a day anyway, and it's 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 cut them down. That's awesome. Well, thanks again, Rod. Really My appreciate pleasure, your time guys. tonight. It was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. I hope I see you again soon. And uh, and uh, you know, go make go crush it, my friends. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rod. Take care, guys. See you later. That's it for this episode of Tech Guys Who Invest. This is Adam. And this is Kevin. Thank you so much for listening to us. Don't forget to join our Facebook page where we're building a community of investors so that we can share ideas, tips, and other ways to help us get out of the rat race. If you found value in this podcast, it would mean the world to us if you could share it with your network. Lastly, we love feedback. It's how we get better. So if you wouldn't mind spending 30 seconds and leaving us an honest review on iTunes or Stitcher, or whatever platform you're using, that would be super sweet. If you want to get on Adam or Kevin's calendar, go to tgwipodcast.com slash contact. We want to help you invest safely, wisely, and ultimately get you out of the rat race. Thanks again. Are we singing? La <laughs> is my voice like that of a planetary giant. <laughs> <laughs> with that with that voice, it sounded like my Adam's apple should be like the size of my head, right? <laughs> it did. <laughs> Why did Zoom do that to me? I don't know. I don't know. That's a very good question. It's crazy. And lucky it wasn't only the interview of our life, right? Yeah, of course. It's I think I think there's a law by the name of a guy named Murphy. I can't remember what it's called. But I think it's something like that. One of the most important interviews of our tech guys who invest podcasting career and we experience technical difficulty <laughs> <laughs> when when grant cardone comes on we'll both sound like we've taken helium right yeah. Hello, oh, when, to when tony oh, robbins comes on we're just not gonna have audio right right we just won't be able to talk <laughs> <laughs> i love it awesome man well we can we could probably use that as a little easter egg or something